Hello everyone. I wanted to uh, do a quick video about a project that I just finished up. This is my quadcopter that I built out of a Phantom 2 frame and battery. I built this after playing around with a hexacopter that I built, um, a uh, pretty standard 550 mil hexacopter, but I wasn't getting the flight time that I wanted and the the hex was kind of big. I didn't want to uh, have to disassemble it and lug it around. It was it was kind of awkward. So I sold that and I started working on my next quad, which was this one. And I, I've been really pleased with the result. This is probably uh, spot on what I was hoping to get out of out of my my build. And I wanted to share that my my design criteria were I wanted a quad that was between 20 and 25 minutes of flight time. I also wanted something that I could use an APM or a Pixhawk because I'm interested in the autonomous capabilities of, of those controllers and also um, I'm a programmer so I'm interested in programming the SDK to do to do some uh, autonomous type uh, stuff so that's why I wanted to, to go with a Pixhawk quad and not a DJI quad, although I can tell you that at least from the airframe perspective, this is a very good performing quadcopter based on my experiences with, with a handful of other multi-rotors. I've had a um, 3DR, IRX Plus, and a um, uh, CX-20, which is more of a toy quadcopter, but it's it's an APM-based quadcopter. And that 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 quad was pretty good. I would say the performance was uh, probably 80% of this one, but battery life was definitely nowhere near as this one. The main benefit of starting with this platform, I think, is the idea of using the um, the battery that, that a Phantom 2 uses, and that's kind of what drove me to this. So I wanted something that was, a, you know, kind of a polished, um, result and you know the, the the battery on this is a very good battery it's it's not a cheap battery but it's a very good battery high quality it's got some intelligence in it and you know it spots right into the frame and, and clicks in that's what really appealed to me and, and why i went this route versus uh, maybe a phantom one which some people are, have done so in order to get to get this going essentially you need to buy a replacement shell kit which is the upper and lower shell plus you need to buy a set of legs this power distribution cable or this power cable that connects to the distribution board and a screw kit you will definitely need a, a spare screw kit because the kit that comes with just the replacement shell uh, strangely does not include all of the the screws that you need to put one of these together with the motors in terms of motors, I was going to go with the 3DI, uh, the DJI um, OEM motors, but I was able to score a set of T motors. These are the anti-gravity uh, upgrades that they sell for Phantom users. Uh, they offer a couple of percentage points more efficiency than the OEM, but I would say if you can't get these for 75 bucks new and their prices are all over the place, so you may not be able to Then just go with the DGI motors because those are, are pretty good motors and um, I, I don't think you'll notice much difference between the two The quad that I put together is a pretty standard quad. I'm going to do more with this in a little bit, but um, the basic airframe and the basic F FPV components are done. I'm using just a standard um, 5.8 gig, 32 channel, you know, economical uh, transmitter here. This is a 600 milliwatt and it's a 12 volt version. And I'm running a Fat Shark TVL900 uh, FPV camera, which is the wide, it's a uh, kind of a widescreen FPV camera and it, it works really well. I can uh, really attest to, to the quality of this. Other than that, it's all, it's all pretty, pretty standard. In terms of electronics, I'm running a Pixhawk Lite flight controller. And if you don't know um, 
what a Pixhawk Lite is, I can tell you. Just just go over to RC Groups. They have a great thread on these. This is just uh, one of several miniaturized Pixhawk variants. And after some research, I determined that I wanted to try this. These are currently around $75 on Amazon. So I would I would highly recommend them. There's a long thread. There's some a few little quirks to this board that you have to understand before you work with it. But um, probably the biggest being that because it's smaller than a standard Pixhawk, um, all of the connectors are uh, consolidated. So you're going to have to do custom wiring to hook things up. Where on a normal Pixhawk, you would just plug things in. You would have all the ports available. These uh, share share connections and you're going to have to make custom cables. So if you're not comfortable doing that, then you probably shouldn't choose this. You can use the standard APM in this in this configuration as well. But uh, what I found is that even an APM is going to it's going to run the length of the board and, and making connections to that is going to be very, very uh, problematic unless you start doing things like, you know, bending pins to get clearance for the shell to uh, to lay flat. And uh, I didn't want to do that. So the other problem I had with I, I started out with an APM was I was having some severe barometer issues and um, I just started looking for another flight controller, so that's that's what um, uh, steered me towards the the Pixhawk Lite. So I definitely recommend it. It's a good it's a good uh, flight controller, and I've had a full size Pixhawk, and I really once it's all installed and everything, I can't tell the difference between that and a full size Pixhawk. I mean, it's it's performing exactly like a full size one um, would for me. Other than other than the flight controller, I have a minimalist, a full size minimalist uh, on on screen display. I wanted to use the smaller one, but I didn't have it. So until I get a smaller one, uh, they have one now that's the mini version. I think it's the size of about half the size of this. So, um, but this works just as fine. And I'm using a XR4 FR Sky XR4 X4R radio in SBUS mode and I'm feeding all 16 SBUS channels into this so um, that works great these receivers are awesome the antenna that come with it um, are run out through the bottom and are attached to the legs just like the the um, standard uh, Phantom is and for a GPS and compass module I'm running an M8N and um, I just hot glued and, and taped it to the top of the shell here and then I made a uh, EMI shield out of some uh, packing tape and some copper foil. It works. It works really well. Now this isn't a fancy one that's grounded or anything, but just to get rid of the or to screen a lot of the the EMI from the from the mic microcontroller or the flight controller, uh, it works well. I get a 15 satellite um, lock where I'm at uh, within less than a minute of turning on the APM, and it's. Um, you know, I, can't, I don't think you can really ask for anything better than that. Now, because the compass module is built into this, I do have some problems with the compass in getting it calibrated, um, and it does suffer from some magnetic interference. Now, really, it's unavoidable because the module is right in the plane of the of the motors, and it's also right over the main flight battery which is you know a, a big source of magnetic interference so I don't think that I'm going to be able to overcome that problem without moving the um, compass and when I find a separate module I will uh, do that but so far I haven't been able to find a a separate compass module that um, I can use I found one for APM but uh, it does not work for Pixhawk so I mean all of the modules I found for Pixhawk are either G consolidated GPS and compass or GPS only. I haven't found a standalone GPS module. I know the the 3DR Solo has a, a compass module in the leg, and so I'm going to look for I'm going to look for one of those and see if I can adapt it. But uh, until then, I've I've got this issue. Now that said, um, I've done a full motor calibration and I've been able to minimize the problem for the most part. And this, for all intent and purposes. Um, uh, works. I haven't had it not work for me. I mean, the the flight performance is is phenomenal. I have really strong um, alt hold and position hold, 
and I haven't had any issues. I was flying the other day in a, in a wind that was probably 25 miles an hour, and, and this thing was just, you know, was rock steady, at least as steady as I, I have seen any, um, any other uh, quadcopter of this size. And um, so I couldn't be more pleased with the performance. In, in terms of um, actual flight time and, and flight performance, again, it's exceeded my expectations. I, I, I did a flight today that was um, just uh, very aggressive flying, uh, nonstop, uh, high speed runs back and forth over a long field. And I was um, at 20% battery. I was at uh, 18 minutes and 47 seconds, so almost 19 minutes of very aggressive flight time. I haven't done a hover test on this, but I suspect that if I do a hover test, I'll get probably 25 minutes of hover, which would be very, very good. So um, about the only other thing I can tell you on this is to make it happen, I had to order a couple of, of custom parts. and Well, I didn't have to, but I decided to use uh, one of these drop-in PDB uh, boards that you can get off of um, Banggood or Good Luck Buy, and these are really nice because they fit directly into the Phantom frame, and they offer you, you know, you've got two Becks here, you've got a five volt and a adjustable 3.6 to 12 volt Beck, so you can use that for 12 volt accessories or or other accessories if you want. It's got a uh, APM connector here now. The APM and Pixhawk pinouts are different than what are listed here, so you won't have to do a custom cable. Um, I don't know why, but um, it's just it's backwards, and you need to to fix that. But the connect the connector is standard, and the voltage is standard, and it has voltage and current pins as well. So it is it is it does work for for uh, APM and Pixhawk, including including the current sensor. Um, the Signal lines are in the PDB as well. Um, these run directly to the um, pads for the motors, and so you've got a, a signal line here that you just solder to your ESC, and then you connect your flight controller directly to these pins, and a little trial and error, you can find out which, which motor goes to which pin. Uh, that's not a problem. Uh, you can use the uh, DJI ESCs, but I chose to buy these um, from the same manufacturer and also on Good Luck Buy or Banggood. Um, these are 15, I don't know if they're 15 or 20 amp ESCs, but they are drop-in replacements for the Phantom frames, uh, Phantom 1 and Phantom 2, but they um, have the ability to run Simon K firmware and the, um, the, the uh, firmware that comes on these is supposedly Simon K but uh, I recommend that you reflash these. I had a couple that had some strange startup chimes and it didn't give me any comfort that I had the same version firmware around all four of the, <laughs> of the ESCs. So I went ahead and made the cable to reflash these with Simon K uh, firmware and to replace the bootloader. Now that's quite an adventure if you've never done anything like that. And so what I would recommend is you, you buy the IC connector off of uh, I think it's a Hobby King. They have a connector that just snaps on top of this IC, and you don't you don't have to solder to the pads here. Um, if you can't do that, then you can go make a cable, and um, you know I would trace. I had to trace each one of these pads back to the correct pin on the IC, and once you have that, then you can then you can hook your custom uh, programming cable up, and that will work as well. But but uh, I felt I needed to do that, and I'm glad I did because now the um, you know I'm confident that the uh, ESCs are all running the same firmware, all running the same firmware settings, and uh, they're all calibrated uh, properly. So um, you know if you're going to order these, I, I would get you know eight of the ESCs and a couple of these boards. They're they're so cheap that you might as well. Um, it's going to take you a few weeks to get them anyway. So. Uh, but definitely, I, I can attest that these parts are are very good. I mean, they they work they work as advertised, and they're well built. The um, what else can I say? So the controller that I'm using is a Tyrannus uh, controller. Um, Welcome to Open TX. So um, 
in terms of, I mean, this is st standard PixHawk APM stuff, but I can tell you that um, with the uh, X4R um, to receiver and the FR Sky telemetry cable, um, you get really good results in terms of telemetry. And so I'll actually fire this up for you so you can see. Um, but um, yeah, put this back here. So the power of these batteries on, you hold them once and then hold them again for a few seconds, and that will that will turn the battery on, which I think is a really neat feature. And um, stabilize active. So. I found a really good telemetry Lua script. It's called uh, Lua Pilot, and um, as you can see here, you know I've got heading and RSSI. Um, the current does work. I did I did do a full current calibration, and it does work. Altitude, vertical speed, speed, um, and then the battery here. Um, so there's two ways that you can con configure this. So you can configure this to read off the voltage or read off the used milliamps. And I've set this so that it uses uh, the capacity and subtracts the used milliamps based on current draw. And I, I found that that's more accurate. Uh, and then of course it does give the, um, the voltage here. So in terms of just a system for you know controlling this quad, I highly recommend the Tyrannus and the uh, the FR Sky telemetry, it just makes it so much easier. And, and this is a very high quality um, telemetry screen. I don't know, I've, I've seen other controllers, I've played around with cheaper ones, I've played around with more expensive ones, and this one just blows blows me away in terms of what you can do with it. It's got full voice voice alerts and haptic feedback, and I don't know, if you've never used a Tyrannus, I can't say enough good things about it. I'd highly recommend them. Um, so, with that said, um, flight performance, like I said, is great. And um, the next thing that I'm going to do with this quad is I'm going to I'm going to build a uh, three-axis gimbal and put a run cam on it. And I'll post a video when I'm done with that, um, just so you can see the complete system. But uh, very good result. I mean, I can't honestly say that you could go out and build one of these cheaper, right? Uh, than than an off-the-shelf Phantom or Iris uh, Plus, but you know the satisfaction of of putting all of the components that you want on it and configuring it and getting a, a really just kind of a polished result is um, you know if that's what if that's what you want then I can definitely recommend this route. The um, you know the results are are just as good um, at least based on what I've read of the um, uh, flight performance of the other other um, off-the-shelf quads. Um, what else? I think that's it. So if you have any questions, um, please feel free to email me. I'll, I'll be happy to answer anything for you that I can. And uh, I'll be posting more videos with uh, showing you the flight performance on this. I think people will be really surprised on just how fast this thing moves. It doesn't look like a normal Phantom at all. It just, I mean, it just hauls ass. And uh, and you know, performance and battery is just is kick ass. So um, I'll leave it there. And if you have any questions, give me an email. But um, thanks for watching.